It's so nice to be here with you today. So nice to be here with you to pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Won't you please, won't you please, please, won't you pray for your neighbor? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of Father Ralph's Neighborhood. I am Father Ralph Swern, the Bat Priest. And I'm so happy that you found your way to our neighborhood here on YouTube. We turn out a new episode. Uh, we try to do it every week. Our production schedule's been a little bit messed up for a variety of different reasons. So just a little bit behind. But we're getting caught up. And this week we're going to be reflecting on uh, the gospel for the 29th. Sunday in Ordinary Time, and if you're reading along with us, which I hope you are, we'll be reading the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 to 21. Now at that time, the Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in his speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful? to pay the census tax to Caesar or not. Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And at that, he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of our Lord. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's? One of your more famous gospel quotes, and it's used by a lot of people in a lot of different circumstances, usually to justify disobedience to civil law. And of course, that is not what our Lord Jesus teaches in this gospel. He says, well, you know what? Do what you have to do. Pay to Caesar what Caesar wants you to pay. But the most important thing is that you give to God what God wants. In those days at that time, the Jewish people had their own coinage. And that coinage was engraved with all oh, fruits and vegetables and all kinds of weird things that we would never expect to see uh, on a coin because we've grown very used to the idea of putting the images of famous historical people on our coins and our currency. But the Mosaic law forbid making any kind of graven image. You remember the golden calf, right? Uh, so uh, the Jewish coins did not have any faces, 
people, anything like that. It was all very, very simple, probably very beautiful in its own way, but not what you could use to pay the Roman tax. To pay the Roman tax, you needed to have a Roman coin. So this is why they had money changers. You remember that great scene uh, when Jesus goes into the temple and he upsets the money changers tables because the money changers were there to take the Roman coins, which you could not use in the temple because they had all these graven images, Caesar's image on them. They would take your coin and they would exchange it for proper Jewish currency, Hebrew currency. But in doing so, they would exact a fee. So you wouldn't get exactly your money's worth out of the money changers. So uh, this is what upset Jesus because these money changers were there in the temple and making money off of these poor people who needed to exchange their Roman currency for the Hebrew currency. So this is nothing new uh, that, this, that this goes on, but they're trying to trap Jesus, not by asking him about the currency as such, but by asking him, is it even proper for us to pay taxes? Should we be paying taxes at all? Is that kind of, in a sense, a very unholy, ungodly thing to do? So this was uh, uh, this was the situation that the uh, they're trying to trap Jesus because if they can get him to say no, no, you certainly should not pay taxes to Rome. Well, then. Uh, Jesus could be arrested for sedition, right? Uh, and and uh, uh, so, if, and then if they could get him to say, yes, yes, pay your taxes, then they would have him, people upset because of course, Rome was an occupying force. Uh, now, <laughs> Rome was, not enslaving per se the people, but their laws were a far cry from the Mosaic law. And the people really felt like they should not have to live by Roman law. So if, if Jesus told the people, of course you have to pay your taxes, how else is Rome going to be able to afford to build all these roads and aqueducts and things. If you've watched The Life of Brian, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you know, so they're hoping they got him. They've got him in a lose-lose situation. No matter what he says, he's going to be in trouble. So Jesus is inspired to say, you know, to, well, first of all, to call out their hypocrisy, right? You hypocrites, show me the coin that is used to pay the taxes to Rome. Well, they took out one of the coins, and there on the coin was an engraving of the head of Julius Caesar. And so he tells them who's picture is this on the coin? Whose engraving is this on the coin? Caesar's, of course, Caesar's. And so Jesus just says, well then, pay to Caesar what you owe to Caesar, but give to God what you owe to God. 2,000 years later, the conversation continues. And uh, uh, I remember growing up, 
during the Vietnam War, there were people refusing to pay their taxes because that tax money was going to support what they believed to be an unjust war. Uh, and I never understood that. I was no politician. I'm still no politician. Uh, but, you know, uh, so I'm going to hold back half of my taxes and I'm going to tell the clerk, the poor clerk at the window, whose job it is to, to collect the tax money, right, that I am withholding half of my taxes so that that money won't go to finance this unjust, immoral war. Well, uh, you know, how is that clerk going to be able to, okay, this, this half of this money, fine, it'll go for your sewers and your streets and everything else, but the other half of the money, no, we'll make sure that it, that, that it doesn't go, the half that you're giving us, uh, that you're not holding back, we'll make sure it doesn't fall into the hands of, of the military. At least, of course, there's no way they could do that. The, the, the protest itself was, if you'll pardon me, goofy, you know. Uh, but, well, you know, they were, they were trying to make, it, make their statement. The reality is, of course, that uh, we are citizens, and as such, we, we belong to and are governed by at the, at the highest level, the, the United States government, the federal government, at a more local level, the state government, at an even more local level, uh, the city or village government under which we live. And of course, we also have the county government. Any, any, any organization of government that can possibly collect a tax from us, they do. Uh, we had to add it up once we were making an online purchase and I said, what happened to the price of this thing? It, it went really up. Well, uh, we actually called customer service and the clerk, very kind, very patient with us on the phone, explained all of the different taxes that their company had to pay because we were making this purchase in Chicago, Cook County, state of Illinois, and of course, United States of America. Uh, it adds up, I think it was over 10% when you added, added everything up. So taxes are a reality for us even, even to this day. And we have to pay them, right? Pay your taxes or go to jail, go directly to jail. Uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200, right? And uh, there's always that square on Monopoly, you know, luxury tax, income tax, tax, tax. Even on Monopoly, you had to pay your taxes. But, you know, there's no square anywhere on the Monopoly board that says, say your prayers, Tithe, right? give to God what you owe to God. What would that square even look like? What would you have, you know? Uh, give, give some of your money, give 10% tithing, give 10% of, of your money to the poorest player in the game, you know? Uh, these are things that, well, we're not, as Roman Catholics, all that good at paying our tithes, giving to God what we truly believe we owe God, right? Um, technically, Catholics, like all other Christian faiths, we're supposed to tithe ourselves. We're supposed to give uh, money from our income uh, to, well, not God directly, of course. Uh, wouldn't we be surprised if he came collecting? But, uh, you know, to the church, uh, you know, during uh, this particularly brutal time 
in our world history, so many people are in need, right? The, those who are victims of war, the war in Ukraine, now the war in the Middle East, uh, uh, people who are victims of, of uh, natural disaster and catastrophes. Yeah, you know, they need our help. Give to God what is God's. And our church should be justifiably proud of the work that we do through Catholic relief services, through Catholic charities, and through other smaller church-based uh, organizations. You know, Chicago is what we call a sanctuary city. And as a result, the number of migrants that are coming into our area, it's an ever-growing number. And little local churches, in addition to Catholic charities and Catholic relief services and the archdiocese, little local churches are stepping up and they're helping the migrants. They're giving them a food and a, and a place to stay. And we all got a little wake up call with the weather. Uh, it, it got really cold all of a sudden. And I had to laugh, you know, they were talking about, it was, you woke up that morning and you thought it was Armageddon, you know, oh, oh, there's black ice, oh, oh. And it was not even an inch nine-tenths of an inch of snow. It's like, really? You know, people, I don't know how many of you are as old as I am, but did you live through the great blizzard of 67? I remember my mom unscrewing the window pane on the top of the back door, screen door, because we were snowed in. And she gave me my little toy shovel, dropped me out the window. At that time, I was still small enough that she could pick me up. You know? And I went out there. It took me a while with my little toy shovel, but I dug out the back door. And we lived through that. I built little tunnels, snow tunnels in the back. Yeah, we had a ball. You know, they had to dig out buses. They had to dig out cars. Really? Nine-tenths of an inch? You know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, ducky wucky said, chicken licking said, give me a break. Right? But for these migrants, <laughs> can you imagine someone from Venezuela, right? Someone from Venezuela. Oh my goodness. Oh, is it cold? I remember when I was working with the kids up at Great Lakes and, uh, the recruits in in November, is where we are uh, now. You know they would chaplain. Is it always this cold up here? And I'd have to break the news to them. You know, sorry, son, this is only November. Wait till February, then come see me. Right? Yeah. So these poor migrants, they're not used to the cold. One of our priests, visiting priests at Quigley, when I was teaching there. Uh, went to the emergency room. He landed at O'Hare in the winter, and he had the cab driver take him to the hospital because there was smoke coming out of his mouth. Had never seen his breath before. Had never been in air cold enough to see his breath before. So, yeah, our migrants, they need our help. Give to God. What is God, right? And let's help these these, these wonderful people, you know, who are here escaping, escaping the horrendous, horrendous horrors uh, that they were living under, right? Uh, so homework this week is going to be pretty easy. Just have to sit back and reflect a little bit. Look at your coins and you see the pictures of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and, you know, uh, my favorite, by the way, if you're, if you're wondering, my favorite picture of a, of a president, and I like to collect uh, that more than, than the others, is, uh, uh, he wasn't really a president, he was a statesman, 
uh, Benjamin Franklin. I love to collect pictures. Of, but in a pinch, hey, Ulysses S. Grant will do too, right? Uh, so, you know what? Take this into your prayer today. Take out, take out some of the money you have in your wallet or some of the coins you have in your pocket and look, look at the images on those coins. And you know what? I bet you there isn't a picture of Jesus Christ on a single one of them. So it's up to us to take that gift that we have and, and help those in the name of God who we can help. Make a donation if you can to Catholic Relief Services, to Catholic Charities. Make a donation to your local diocese, to your, to your parish, so that they can take that money and use it to do the work of God. And you'll be giving to God what is God's. Uh, you know, there may not be a square on the Monopoly board, but we live, we live with that mandate. Tithe, right? Give what we can afford to give to help others in the name of God. Give to God what is God's. I hope you come up with a good list and I hope you're able to make a difference in the lives of those around you. So, good Lord willing and the crick don't rise, we'll be back next time with another episode. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single one of them. And until then, we pray that the Lord will send his angels to watch over you, to protect you, to guard you, and to guide you in all of your ways. That he will fill you with the power of his most Holy Spirit so that you may continue to give to God what is God and to use your resources to make a real difference in the lives of those who are most in need. May our Lord bless you and protect you and watch over you and guide you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you and all those you love his peace.